Conceptual and uh, PTMC by Dr. Milan Chadi. Thank you, respected chairpersons and my dear friends. Actually, my topic is about just techniques of transceptual puncture only. There is separate dedicated lecture on PTMC. So, ultimately, Dr. Srinivas Kumar uh, discussed with me that uh, you just discuss on transceptual puncture only. And that is very, very important step for BMV also. And, uh, there is separate lecture on PTMC. So, I am just going to discuss about uh, transceptual puncture and its technique. So, the, basically, almost uh, in 1959, first, uh, first time it was described by Dr. John Rose. Uh, in annals of surgery that uh, you can do transceptor puncture and go to left side of heart and measure the hemodynamics. But uh, over the last uh, almost 50 years, indications have totally changed. Now we do transceptor puncture more for interventions. Of course, balloon mitoviroblasty is the first uh, and most common uh, indication in India. But uh, there are emerging indications like we do percutaneous age to age mitre repair which should come to India in the near future. If you want to do integrated balloon valvuloplasty, aortic valvuloplasty, you have to go to left side. You can do transeptual PFO closure. You can do percutaneous closure of paravalvular leak on left side. You, if you want to close left atrial left appendage percutaneously, then also you have to do transeptual puncture. And of course, for percutaneous heart wall implantation, you may need to do transeptual puncture. For EP guys, any left sided atrial or ventricular arrhythmia, they have to enter left atrium and do transeptal puncture. Even for diagnosis of mitral gradient or diagnosis of aortic gradient, which were the past indications, they have now become very, very rare. I mean, we don't do this for just measuring gradient. It is very rarely required. So, absolute contraindication is practically only one. Left atrial cavity thrombus, even if it is organized thrombus in the left atrial appendage, we still do it. But if it's left atrial cavity thrombus or tumor like myxoma, then it's absolute contraindication. There are relative contraindications and uh, of course distorted anatomy of the heart or chest wall, significant chest and spine deformity, inability to lie flat because of severe pulmonary congestion or pulmonary edema. Of course, many of us might have done even in some proper position also in emergency balloon mitoviroplasty in a patient with critical mitral stenosis. And of course, these are all relative contraindications. If you have some spine deformity or chest deformity, experience operator can do that uh, transeptal puncture with uh, utmost care. If patient has ongoing anticoagulation with INR is more than 1.5, you should try to avoid it. If there is extreme atrial enlargement, LA or RA, you need some different maneuvers, which I will discuss. If there is dilated aortic group, then also you have to be careful. If there is previous page repair of the atrial septum, then it is very hard to puncture and there are different techniques for that. And if there is interruption of uh, inferior vena cava and azagous continuation, you may have to do puncture from the superior vein and jugular vein. We know about this uh, mullein sheath and broken borrow needle. This is usually eight French sheath with uh, dilator and then needle itself is uh, uh, almost 18 goes with a uh, tip is about 21 goes. And we are familiar with this uh, pointer, and pointer points towards the direction of the needle. So we know where, where the needle tip is from outside. We do it under some guidance. And in India, 99% of time it is X-ray or fluoroscopy guided puncture. We usually, most of our centers do not use trans thoracic or trans esophageal echo. Of course, size is practically not available in India. Of course, theoretically, people can do under CT guided, MRI guided, or even electrogram. I'm not going to discuss this. I'm just going to focus only on fluoroscopy guided method. So this is the most important for those who are really want to learn the technique and how to be sure. We know that uh, Hosa Wallis area where we are interested, it is just uh, inferior and posterior to the aortic root. And if you go back to history, these are the classic radiological techniques described by Eno and then in Hung in 1992, in same year. What actually Eno was telling that if you draw a line from the roof of the tricuspid wall and go to the right border of the left atrium, draw an imaginary line and draw a vertical line at the center of that, your fossa wall is, is in this plane. It is of the height of the one vertebral body and it is along this line. So you have to puncture, you draw an imaginary line from the tricuspid wall to the left atrial border on the right side 
take a midpoint, draw a vertical line and puncture somewhere here. So it is around one to three centimeter below this line, should be the ideal side. So for this, actually what he did, he did right atrial angiogram to define the tricuspid wall upper border and then RV gram and then through the Rio phase, he phrased the frame on the fluoroscopy in the AP view to define the left atrium. So he got this point and then he drew a line, imaginary line and took a vertical line. What Hung modified this technique that you don't need to do angiogram. What you have to do is that suppose you put a pigtail catheter in the aortic sinus that will almost correspond to the tricuspid wall. And if patient has something like mitral stenosis or if uh, fluoroscopically also if you are careful, without injecting dye you can see the left atrial border. So you draw an imaginary line again, take a vertical point and go one to three centimeter below this midpoint and that is the site where you should puncture. So we don't do right atrial angiogram routinely. That was in AP view. Now this is lateral view. What you have to do again, your catheter is there in the aortic sinus touching the aortic wall and you draw a line from this pigtail catheter to the posterior heart border, which is here. Take a midpoint and this is the point where you should try to puncture. Actually, you can puncture anywhere in the middle one third of this line. So this is the another point. So you should try to see in two views, AP view and lateral view. So this is how you can even define the interatrial septum. This is a pigtail catheter in left lateral view. Uh, not pigtail, sorry, this is right Zutkin in the left lateral view and pigtail is not there, you put pigtail, pigtail will look like this and then you draw an imaginary line. So line will be here and you try to see where, where it crosses, almost it, in the center septum is crossing. So it is this portion which we are supposed to puncture. So when you go through 3-2 wire, go to SVC, put a mullein sheath and mullein dilator along with it, along with the needle, always de-air here only. You remove the air because ultimately when you enter the left atrium, no air should go to the left side, otherwise it will cause cerebral embolism. So you should de-air the system and then bring down the entire assembly downwards in the AP view and you should see that your pointer this needle pointer is facing almost at 5 o'clock position, like this. So when you are at 5 o'clock position like this, you are just at the perpendicular to the plane of the RA and LA, that is interactive septum, and you will puncture directly into the LA. So you are keeping the needle pointer at the 5 o'clock position, coming from above below, from SVC to RA, and then at that time you will get two jumps. One jump will be at the junction of the SVC and RA, and second time, when you actually enter the fossa valis, because fossa valis has some ridge in most of the patients, and you enter in this area, and again you will get another jump, or give in sensation. So this is our AP view. I told that pictel is there in the aortic sinus. We have already come down after two jumps in this position. This looks reasonably good. Just try to see that uh, Hung's recommendation, draw an imaginary line from this to the left atrial border, draw a vertical line, okay, you are in same plane and you are one, two, three centimeter below that. So in this position it looks okay. You are not still puncturing, go to RA view. So in RA view, again you are one, two, three centimeter below the horizontal line and your needle should point anteriorly in this view. Many times when you are in AP view, it looks perfect. But when you go to RA view, needle is either pointing posteriorly, then Without moving up or down, just rotate it slightly clockwise so that needle will face anteriorly. After doing this, still you are not puncturing, go to lateral view and draw a line again to the posterior heart border from the pigtail catheter. Again, you are in the middle one third, you are almost at the center and then already actually your puncture is already made and you are punctured and inject the dye, you are in LA. So this is how you should always confirm in three views. I always confirm in three views, AP view, and this is the summary. In AP view, try to draw a horizontal line, draw a vertical line in the midpoint and go one to three centimeter below. And in the lateral plane, again from the pictal to the posterior heart border and take center point. So this is the summary of this uh, fluoroscopic landmarks. When you reach to the LA, always inject dye, you can actually 
connect the broken marrow needle with the pressure line also. There is three way. So you can always check the pressure, you can inject the dye also. So when you check the pressure, you can always immediately see that once you enter the LA, RA pressure will become LA pressure. And of course, if you are in doubt, always check saturation also. Once everything is confirmed, at this point we are giving heparin now. Heparin can be given 70 units per kg to even 100 units per kg, depending upon the procedure indication, how long it's going to take. So as soon as you puncture, this uh, RA pressure will be converted to LA pressure because now needle is already entered the LA and if your broken valve needle is connected to pressure line, you can immediately measure LA pressure also. So this is how you should puncture, but there can be anatomic variation. There can be a patient has typical mitral stenosis where most of the time you are going to puncture transeptum. Then it is usually too low and too posterior a puncture when it is a giant left atrium. Normally, Fossaholis area in a small LA is at its usual position, but as soon as LA becomes more and more large, that Fossaholis area goes downwards and posteriorly. So actually, you have to puncture, you have to re rotate your uh, needle or pointers towards 6 o'clock, 7 o'clock or sometimes even at 8 o'clock position to have perpendicular to this plane of, uh, this is a giant LA, this is CT, this is RA, LA and this is this is the plane of the entire septum and you may have to go up to even or 7 or 8 o'clock position to reach to the true, true Fosaulis area. So sometimes there is giant right atrium because of organic trichosid disease and severe TR. Then LA may be at its usual site and your routine current needle may not even touch the left atrial, I mean IAS or intraterial septum. In that case, manually in the outside only, you have to give more curve to the needle so that you can reach to the septum and you can puncture the septum. So this has to be done outside manually if your RA is too large. Sometimes you may not get two jumps at SVC RA junction and if fossa is bulging, all fossa are not same. You may not say uh, given sensation, you may have bulging fossa and you may not get any you know, sensation. But if you are anatomically, if landmark wise, if you are correct, then don't, don't, even if you not get any jump, you can still puncture at that site. If dextrocardia is there, simplest way is to, if it is a mirror image dextrocardia, just to become familiar, you may just do right left reversal on the fluoroscopy screen so that you are more familiar. And of course, all the maneuvers, what you have to do while rotating the uh, catheters and uh, needle, they are just opposite. Means clockwise become counterclockwise and fluoroscopically you can have right to left reversal. There are pro uh, procedure specific puncture sites. Suppose you are doing eight to eight mitre hour repair then puncture is deliberately is superior and slightly posterior compared to Fosaulis area. This is the Fosaulis area, this is LA, this is LA appendage, mitral wall is here, this is RA and this is the entire septum, this is Fosaulis area. So for edge to edge repair, your puncture is deliberately high and slightly posteriorly. If you are in LA appendage closure, then it is at the upper part of Fosaulis. If it is mitral wall or BMV, you may be slightly on the lower, lower side of the posaolis so that your entry to the mitral wall is more easy. So this is why we go to higher puncture size for eight to edge repose because ultimately this catheter has to com come perpendicular t uh, across the mitral wall so that you can catch the both anterior and posterior mitral leaflet correctly. And of course when you are doing BMV, if you are lower, it is easy entry in the LV and uh, maneuver will be much less. Sometimes septum is very tough or it is bulging or is aneurysmal or is floppy, then you may not be able to puncture with routine broken borrow needle. So at that time you can have several other uh, variations. You can have electrosurgical cautery generator connected to the needle, which can give radio frequency current to the uh, septum or your needle tip and you can puncture it. If septum is very thick or very floppy, you can have dedicated Bellis Toronto RF catheter system there can be safe sept wire, there can be laser or there can be SVC approach if there is IVC interruption. So I'll go briefly about one by one. So you, you can just simply touch the cautery catheter to the needle. Needle is of stainless steel, so it will transmit the energy and that energy will be transmitted to the tip and, <coughs> and you can apply radio frequency energy at the entire septum and you can do puncture. If you have dedicated system, then you can use that symptom 
system to puncture this uh, floppy septum because if septum is floppy like this, you push broken bone needle, needle will just go on towards left side, it will just tend the, tend the septum but it will not puncture it. So in that case you can use radio frequency instrument. There is another system for very tough septum that is known as sep sep uh, wire. It is a simple wire only but the wire is very straight till it is in the needle. So the entire seat and needle assembly is same and through the needle you pass a very thin wire. As soon as that wire comes out of the needle, it, it retains its J shape. So you don't, so you have to just apply very hard force to the septum when you are at the per perfect site and as soon as you puncture with the stiff, stiff wire, you are enter the LA and as soon as the wire is out by say about 5 to 10 millimeter, it regains its J shape so it will not injure the, this part of the left atrium. So it gives you extra force, yeah. And just last approach is SVC approach. This is a unique when IVC is interrupted or, or IVC is blocked or there is any, something where you cannot have IVC approach, then you go, can go through the SVC approach. So there is a special stabilizer sheath. So this sheath is passed from the SVC to the IVC or upper IVC rather. And there is a side hole in, the, in the, this stabilizer sheath. And through this side hole, you pass uh, this uh, flexible puncture guide catheter. And in this puncture guide catheter, which goes like this, you can manipulate it toward the site of fossa hollis. And there is a special screw-like device which will puncture the septum from above. This is your stabilizing seat. And you can puncture the entire septum. And then you can uh, finish the procedure for which whatever is the indication. Complications, you are aware. Mortality should be less than 1% and of course tamponade is the most important and dreaded complication and everybody should be familiar with pericardiocentesis because if you, before you start doing uh, left atrial puncture or transeptal puncture, everybody has to learn pericardiocentesis and you can actually puncture any part of the RA, you can puncture even up to aorta from your vein, but stage phenomena is the most common where if your puncture is slightly above or slightly below, then you are going from RA to the outside of heart and again entering the LA. So it is very difficult to realize initially. But as soon as you dilate the septum and you remove the dilator and when only guide wire is there, blood will start leaking from this dilated, this border of the LA and this border of the RA and you will get tamponade. So in that case, just push the dilator back. You can finish your BMV, balloon mitovalloplasty, but ultimately most of the stitch will need surgical correction. So you can have training, you can use, you can have simulators, but ultimately even whatever training may be, accidents are going to happen. You must learn pericardiosynthesis before you do balloon, if you, before you try transeptal puncture. And of course, if somebody wants to read something about this, this is a good, good topic or good uh, textbook, like uh, textbook to chapter in this uh, PCR textbook of interventional medicine which was published this year only by Europe ECR group. And you can read this chapter, which has very good detail about transeptal puncture and techniques. Thank you.